All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Jean Sullivan Vallecci, who is the dating coach, and we're going to get to hear a little bit more about her, her dreams and goals, and how we can help. So, Jean, how are you doing? I'm fabulous. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Timothy. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. We're happy to have you, and we like to jump right in. So if you could start by telling us a little bit about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Well, for fun, I really... I don't think I'm the most exciting individual, but I really love hiking. And I really just, that's just my favorite place. It's for, it's like my spirit time. I love to really, you know, it helps bring me peace. It helps me f- be creative. Um, whenever I have a problem I need to solve, that just seems to set me right, get me back in the present. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I love that. Often a lot of people are saying outdoorsy things and, mm-hmm. Okay, for, so I'm normal. Yeah, it's for, <laughs> it's for some of those same reasons, right? When you get outdoors, it like helps calm you down, gets you in touch with yourself. So I like that a lot. Tell us a little bit about being a dating coach, like what it's like and what you did beforehand too. So I used to be um, a consultant for PR in the destination marketing space. So I would help promote tourism companies, uh, destinations and attractions and hotels and things like that. And um, I got into coaching because I was seeing a coach uh, about 20 years ago, and she really changed my life in, in ways that I didn't even go to her for coaching. There was something about the process of coaching that gave me courage in other areas of my life. And for many years, she was encouraging me to become a coach. She thought I had the right um, right qualities and skills for it. So I was doing it informally at work, but more on the career side, you know, leadership and, you know, coaching um, people into stepping up. And then um, a few years ago, I decided to get certified and I kept on with the career coaching a lot in Silicon Valley, New York. And the interest, most interesting thing happened when I would coach people on career, they always, almost always brought up relationships and dating. And there was something about coaching that aspect of their lives that really turned me on emotionally, spiritually. I felt like this movement inside, like this is really what I meant to do. And I think part of what made me realize that too, is that when I would tell my love story, which was, you know, something no one would have predicted. Uh, People get really inspired and they get hopeful because they feel like if I did it, because I had a lot of strikes against me, uh, they could do it. And I felt like maybe this is my purpose is to share that story and to share what I did and new skills I've learned as a coach to help people attract a love they deserve, a love that kind of elevates and supports them rather than holds them back. Gotcha. And would you say that's, mainly your motivation for keeping going with the um being a dating coach like helping people attract that love and sharing that story and kind of see that light pop up in them when you start helping them yeah that's a really good question because when i when i look at a person if they're an ideal fit for me as a client and i'm sure you feel this way too with your clients um that you come across when you have that connection with someone um sometimes you can see things about them they can't because they're just either going through a rough patch or they've shut off a part of themselves for a while but i have this weird ability to kind of see what's hiding and what wants to come out and i help people get in touch with that and let out their whole selves part of themselves maybe they've been repressing and i mean the good stuff like you know maybe they used to be more outgoing they used to be more flirty and they used to have more fun but you know life got in the way and they've forgotten that part of themselves but it's that part of themselves that's their secret sauce to being magnetic and pulling people in and attracting the right people to them so i love 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 bringing that back out in people awesome awesome i love that and so now we're going to go ahead and jump into your dreams and goals so what's your vision for both your dating coach business, but also your life in general? So as a dating coach, uh, my dream is something that I'm working on every day. 
I am looking to be a coach on a broader scale. I started out doing one-on-one -on -one, and I recently did a group program, my first one, that wasn't just a webinar. You know, I had a group of people who were with me for a couple of months and I was taking them through my six step process to releasing resistance to love, clarifying their vision of what they want, um, rebranding themselves, I use drawing on my marketing skills and dating in a new way that's more effective for them. So I take them, I took them through that process and there was something unexpected that came up out of everybody coaching together as a group. They loved the live interaction with me, but also each other. They, and it made me realize that I could have a lot more, I could have a lot more influence and help a lot more people if I could scale my business so that I, ha I do a lot more public speaking and putting myself out there on a bigger platform. Um, to get there though, was a little scary for me. I, 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 <laughs> I come from a background where terribly afraid of public speaking, like handshaking, throat closing, the whole deal. But I, I overcame that recently. I, I had to work at it. And now I really enjoy it. And so that's really what my dream is for my business. Um, for myself, I, it's really the same thing. Myself, it's just to continue living on purpose. I feel like for now, this is my purpose, but if that changes, I, I check in with myself on my walks and try to find out if there's another mission that's bubbling up that I need to attend to. But for me, it's always about living on purpose. Awesome, awesome. I really like that, especially, um, you know, having your dream and goal for yourself, not be attached to any one thing, but it's just like, I wanna be as in touch with myself as I can be. and. Mm -hmm live according to that i like that a lot i love authenticity <laughs> um, yeah. yeah that's awesome and so when it comes to coaching on a broader scale public speaking and getting a bigger platform how did you go about getting over that fear of public speaking well uh if it's okay if i could be a little woo woo for a minute i if you give me permission <laughs> i'll tell or, you i don't know what that means um, but <laughs> woo woo is uh metaphysical you know a little uh not not so much like um science based but more spiritually based um i kind of had this uh a couple of things happen one was i i made myself i challenged myself uh to be a guest speaker on a bunch of media interviews i was used to from a pr standpoint putting other people in front of the cameras <laughs> and I challenged myself to do uh, 20 interviews in three months, if I could. So I reached out to a bunch of podcasts and um, TV shows and radio shows. And at first I was terrified to be honest, but over the course of continuing to do it, I could see myself getting better and more relaxed and, and the reactions of people, they weren't, they weren't nitpicking me like I would nitpick myself. You know, they were just really listening to the authenticity and the story. And that really, really helped me overcome that fear is to be in touch with who I really am and being honest about who I was and being frank who I was. Because once you are really yourself and you're talking about something you're passionate about, that helps a lot too, because then you overcome your imposter syndrome, right? because it's something you, you really do feel like you know about a lot about. Um, the interesting thing was I had this really spiritual thing. It's, it's kind of wacky, but while I was going through this, um, I asked for a sign if this was something that I really should be doing. Um, and the interesting thing is about an hour later, I heard a knock at my door. And at the door was a pheasant. Have you ever seen a pheasant? <laughs> I have not. So a pheasant is uh, an enormous bird. It doesn't normally knock on people's doors. It's very shy. It's very, very colorful, though. Um, but it's very shy. And um, I looked around the corner because it was twilight. So I wasn't expecting anyone, a postal worker or anybody. And I looked around the corner through the door and there was this pheasant, you know, 
<laughs> peering through the door at me. And um, I was like, okay, that's odd. So the reason that was significant for me is that I believe in um, Native American um, animal totems, spirit guides that come through interactions with animals, especially if it's an unusual interaction. And when I looked up what a pheasant totem was, it says, um, pheasant comes to the person who is afraid to put themselves out there and show their colors. And it is a calling, a call to adventure to really put yourself out there with, with, with joy and don't be afraid to, to strut and show your colors. So that I paid crazy. attention. That's so awesome. <laughs> It really is. I mean, it, it's a little wacky, but I figured you'd like that because it's authentic. It's what happened. It really, it kind of just helped me with the final shift. This is something to enjoy and not to be afraid of because if I keep being afraid and keep giving into that fear, I'm not going to be able to help people who really need inspiration, who need hope that they can find someone. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, it can be wacky, but there are a lot of things that Whack, that are wacky that happen in life every day that you know just kind of normalized anyway and <laughs> i don't know if you've uh if you've ever heard of like law of attraction i'm just i'm guessing you have based on your yep <laughs> that's right so the name of my book no that's right it's very perceptive the name of my book is be the soulmate you want to attract and i do believe because of what happened to me and i'll share that later when it when it comes up but is my love story was a, a, like a, almost a textbook case of, of law of attraction. Um, so yeah, that's right. Actually, can you just share it right now? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, um, so you have to picture this about 12 years ago, I broke up with um, a long term relationship um, that was no longer serving me. It wasn't well, it hadn't been serving me for a long time. But I had this pattern of settling for relationships that kind of held me back um, where I didn't get what I needed and I would be giving, giving, giving and not getting in return. And it was my fault. <laughs> you know, it was, it was how I felt inside about myself and what I deserved. So I decided to go on this two year journey of figuring out why that was and what I could do about it. And I went through this whole I uh, traveled around the world and I studied with a lot of dating and relationship masters and I became certified um, and what I really figured out was that I, I didn't really fully love myself I hadn't really fallen in love with myself and RuPaul who's one of my favorite. Um, inspiring people, you know, always says on uh, RuPaul's drag race that um, if you can't love yourself, how can you love anybody else? And so that was a really important journey for me. And I should mention that when you're middle aged as a woman, you already feel like your dating pool is a tiny puddle. Um, <laughs> we feel that way for sure. Um, I was 300 pounds. I was quite fluffy. And I had uh, another strike against me, uh, which is I had a strong personality. And a lot of people told me, oh boy, no man's gonna want that. They don't like that. And so I decided not to buy into any of that narrative. And instead, um, you know, I, I put myself out there with love um, and I put myself online and the interesting thing was I was drawing a lot of attention and my thinner friends were like, what the heck? You're getting a lot of attention, girl. And I said, I think it's my confidence. I think it's my authenticity is ringing, th ringing through. And, um, but the thing was, I was attracting like really young men, like cubs looking for cougars. I was like this accidental cougar. Yeah. And um, I was asking the guys like, what is it that, that, you know, brought you to me and, and they were like, well, you know, um, you look really fun. You look like you're out to have a good time, to enjoy life. You don't look like you're looking for anything serious. And the light bulb went off. What, did, what am I saying in my profile? That's not letting them know what I 
that I, I really want a long-term relationship. I want a husband. So I look at my, I looked at my profile and I realized that I had held back a lot in what I was writing about myself. So I decided to fly my freak flag a little bit and put myself out there like supercharged. And the very next day I saw a complete shift in who was coming in. Uh, suddenly I was getting in men who were more my age and looking for something more serious and they had similar values and goals and they were really complimentary of, of the profile and how authentic it was. And one of those men, 24 hours later, was my husband. Like you guys got married 24 hours later? No, no, no. But he, oh. my future husband. <laughs> No, no, no. That would be a little nutty. That would be a little nutty. No, but it was, he showed up. Um, I didn't know in that moment he was my husband, but I knew in that moment when I saw these new men coming in, like this immediate shift, that shift directly related to how that night, the night before, when I put that up there with a whole new clarity and a whole new energy, a shift occurred. And it's like the universe responded really quickly with a similar um, vibration and what I wanted. So what I learned from that was I was suddenly resonating vibrationally, if you will, with what I wanted with that vision. Does yeah. that make sense? Oh, it makes, it makes so much sense. And then also makes no sense to me just because, <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm like, I kind of read a little bit about the law of attraction. I'm really big into success literature and it usually pops up in every other book that I'm reading. And I'm just like, it's just crazy to me. But then if you think about it and you actually evaluate your life, it's happening every day, all day. Like It is. And when you're having a bad day, have you noticed the more you focus on what a bad day it is, it just gets worse and worse. Yep. And I, I've, um, I still coach. I still have some older clients who stuck with me um, from Silicon Valley. So these are people who have trouble sometimes with law of attraction. They're very left-brained and... I understand that. And the thing thing is, I still do have a practical approach. I respect science 100%. So I tell, you know, um, sometimes instead of saying um, the universe, right, the universe is bringing this to me, we say we replace it with my positive focus. And then that kind of helps build the bridge so that they can see. No one can argue with scientifically studies show that the more positively you focus on a goal, and vision yet that goal, you're more likely to achieve it. I mean, just from a practical standpoint. So absolutely. I try absolutely. I help people look at it that way so they're not too afraid it's too woo-woo now that you know the term woo-woo. <laughs> I uh to support law of attraction, like in my own head, I learned about confirmation bias as a psychology major. And basically it's like you have these beliefs and you look for evidence to affirm the beliefs that you have. Yeah. And that, yeah. that just goes line in line with the law of attraction and like how things pop up in your life. Yeah. I mean, no matter how it works, I just have found it does work. And for people who have trouble with it, like they've seen other people with success in it, it's really just about feeling your way to what you want. And that means if you look at it at an energetic level, um, that you're in alignment, you're at that, you're vibrating emotionally of like trusting that you already have it, that you already have what you want. You're already trusting that. You feel like you've done everything you can and now it's time to, to let go and trust that it will come to you as long as you can keep that positive focus. You know, it's not just having it in your head. You have to really feel and trust that it's coming. And I think that's a lot of motivational speakers who maybe don't talk about law of attraction. They do talk about that, really feeling and using your senses to visualize how you would feel as if you have it. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. <clears throat> I am right there with you. Um, <laughs> awesome. So if there was one type of person that you could meet right now that would help you take the next step towards really scaling the public speaking side of your coaching business and getting that bigger platform, who would that person be and how would they do it? I know this sounds really crazy, but... Um... Since we're being authentic here, I would say my dream would be to meet RuPaul. The reason that I think RuPaul could teach me a lot is I use uh, 
the example of drag queens a lot in my coaching and how I use them is I use them as a great example of living out loud. A lot of drag queens um, have overcome a lot of prejudice and uh, didn't make a lot of money, but they were doing something that they really loved. And then when RuPaul came along and made it more of a legitimate form of art and a legitimate way to make money and be in business and, ha and have a career, you know, she was a great example of, or he, sometimes he calls himself he or she, but, you know, if you really look at what he's done, here was this like, you know, shy kid who had all these dreams, but manifested this global <laughs> platform and has changed so many people's lives. And I think RuPaul could teach me, if I were lucky enough uh, to meet RuPaul one day, um, how to really continue to believe in yourself and put yourself out there with like 100% devotion and clarity and focus. I think I think I could learn a lot. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. And so what is the one or two most important things that everyday people can do to help you accomplish your dream or goal of getting that public speaking going and increasing your platform? You mean every day for me personally or for them? Yeah. Everyday people can do for you, like to help you. For me? Wow. Um, I think to you know, the more that they hear my story to refer people to me, whether it's on social media or my website, so that they can um, get connected to this information. You know, if they hear somebody, oh, you know what, I know someone who <laughs> really sounds a lot like this woman, really, I think she would really resonate, you know, send those people my way. And if it turns out that you know, there, you know, if we had a free consultation and that, that wasn't a mutual fit, I may even know somebody who might be a better fit for them. You know, I think rising tides raise all ships. So it doesn't have to be transactional even. I've talked to lots of people um, who just need like a little kernel of hope, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. And so if you had to give everyday people advice on how to accomplish their dreams, what would you tell them? Um, well, I would use law of attraction as an easier way to maybe, I would tell them, you know, release, release resistance to what it is that is in the way of having you reach your goals of what you want. So it could be you have blocks around self-worth maybe it's imposter syndrome um maybe you've made a lot of mistakes in the past and you haven't forgiven yourself or haven't haven't reframed them yet as lessons rather than failures because of course that's what the most successful people do the most successful people in the world have given themselves permission to make mistakes and that's why they are <laughs> where they're at now because they learn from them so releasing that resistance, identifying what it is that's getting in your way of feeling like you can actually have that dream that you want. And then learn new ways to focus on getting what you want, clarify that vision of what it is that you want. Um, you know, be specific, you know, I want to make this much money. I want to have a house uh, in California. I want to have a happy family. And what does that feel like? And start to make goals that are maybe, you know, start with baby steps towards those goals, but start mapping out a one year, maybe a one year mind map, a five year mind map, so that you can figure out, okay, what do I want to accomplish this year that's going to move me towards that higher vision? You know, if it's having a family and you're single, well, I'll see a dating coach or I'll read a book on dating, take a baby step towards, towards that and then map out what's your five-year goal. Well, maybe I'll 
I'll join some meetups around dating and then do the same thing with your, your career goals, your life goals. Um, one thing I really like to do in my work is I like to help clients figure out what their life purpose is. So when they're saying to me that they're really bored in their career, bored in their life, I do a, a session around what is your life purpose and I guide them through these exercises so that they can really have some clarity around, am I living on purpose every day? What is my purpose? A lot of times people don't really, they just have a general feeling, but they don't really have clarity around it. So I think the more you can get clarity around what, you, what, what your mission in life is, at least as you know it now, that really helps you clarify your goals and how to get there over the next few years. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, that's another thing that always pops up in success literature, you know, clarity and focus, clarity, mm -hmm. and focus, and then consistency. Um, and if, and, and if there's anybody listening out there who's like, yeah, but I have kids and yeah, I have these understand it doesn't have to be big steps. Baby steps are okay. Just keep moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. No zero days. <laughs> zero days. I like that. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, now we're going to jump into our thriving three. And so I'm going to just ask you some questions about how you're thriving every day in life. And so what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Okay. I'm going to say my favorite book is um, The Queen's Code. <laughs> it's by Alison Armstrong. And it's not literature. It's... Um, she is a, a relationship coach that I studied with. And she, the reason I love her so much is she has a way of teaching women how to be strong without being defensive, to be a real queen of themselves. And not from a perspective of being, you know, lavished <laughs> with, jewels or something like that but to really reclaim their power in such a way that doesn't diminish men because a lot of times especially in the me too movement and all the talk of the patriarchy there's a lot of um defensiveness women can project onto men and i find that really gets in the way of loving soulmate relationships so that's why i really love that book because she 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 was the first person to really um bring that out there and put that out that information there so that women can learn um, a more loving way that's loving to both to themselves and to men. Gotcha. I love that. <laughs> what is one way that you like to care for yourself? I know you already mentioned hiking, but is there anything else or do you want to just put hiking down? I think um, making time for myself to do self care in other ways. And sometimes, um, that's meditation. As a person who's a type A, meditation is really hard for me to do, um, slowing down enough to do that. Um, so sometimes what I do is if, if I'm just running around too much, um, I have found short ways to meditate so that I'm still getting that, that brain relaxation, that mindfulness. And sometimes I just take five minutes to do a simple breathe in for four seconds and breathe out for four seconds. Sometimes I do um, abundance breathing. Um, there's a belief in law of attraction that if you breathe in quickly seven times and exhale slowly seven times, and then you reverse it, breathe in slowly seven times and breathe out quickly seven times, that it creates an aura of abundance whether you believe it really does, or if it's uh, simply just shifting your mindset and helping you focus your intention, that really helps me get out of um, any stress that I'm in and reset. Gotcha. I love that. You know, I've been recording a lot of these podcasts in the past couple of weeks, and that's probably the third time I've heard about some form of breath work. Mm -hmm. and probably like the 15th time I've heard about meditation being really key. So uh, it's definitely a serious thing. <laughs> it is. And I just want to tell people like, 
I, I, I really know how much resistance is out there to meditating for a lot of people. Like they know they should, it becomes a chore. So find a way to do it where it's not a chore. You can do it simply. It's easy to do. You don't have to sit there on a mountaintop for, you know, <laughs> three hours. You can, you can find little short bursts of time to be mindful. You don't have to be perfect at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so our last question is, what is one action step you can take right now or continue to take to get to your dream of really increasing that platform, getting more public speaking gigs? I just joined um, a women's uh, mastermind group. And what I did was to find them, I, I started really, I said, I knew, I knew that my ideal clients were more sometimes coming to me from people hearing me on the radio or on TV, but a lot of times they were coming through referrals. And I thought the next step in my business would to be, would be to find joint venture partners, people who we, you know, we could help each other cross promote people whose businesses were aligned with mine. So I found this, um, this group in the Bay area called Fem Talks, and these women are all very, very similar to me. They're very, um, they're entrepreneurial, they're spiritual, but they're also very practical at the same time. And that's kind of who my ideal client is. You know, they're very successful in their lives, but for some reason, they, their love life doesn't reflect that. There's just some resistance there to receiving that kind of love. So I think through networking with these women, I've already found joint partners already in, in like the past two weeks. So I think that's really the next step for me. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Is there anything <laughs> else you want to chat about before we sign off? No, I, I think, I think that was great. I really enjoyed the, the chat. I really did. Yeah, no, it's always a fun time getting on the podcast and just talking about things that matter, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's wonderful what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, awesome. If you were listening to this and you loved what Jean had to say, make sure to connect with her. Ways to contact her will be in the show notes and make sure to hold her accountable to increasing her platform, getting more public speaking gigs. <laughs> and um, also, if you have any referrals for her, please shoot her, uh, shoot them her way and just make sure that we're always like feeding her business. And then, you know, it'll just reciprocate as you help people out and you'll grow great relationships. So Please do that. Amen. 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 Um, <laughs> the final thing is send this episode to somebody you know needs to hear it. Maybe they're having trouble with um, their dating life or just intimacy in their relationships and they need to talk to Gene. Shoot the episode their way and uh, maybe it's a referral for Gene. Who knows? But thank you guys for listening. Gene, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, thank you. Give us a five star rating on iTunes and we're out. Thank you.